All right, this video is entitled Portfolio Analysis, but we're actually going to begin with more properties of joint random variables. So, I want to quickly take you through some of these equations here. When we're talking about expected value of two joint random variables, uh, we say the expected value of x plus y is really just the expected value of x plus the expected value of y, otherwise known as their averages. Um, the difference between two random variables, the expected value for the expected value of the difference between two random variables is just a subtraction. It's just expected value of x minus expected value of y. A um, little bit more complicated when we start talking about the variance of two portfolios, which, uh, from which you can derive, of course, a standard deviation. Standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So the variance of x plus y is going to be the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y. It's getting a little bit tricky. And the variance of x minus y is going to be variance of x plus the variance of y minus 2 times the covariance of x and y. OK, all that put out there. Let's talk about portfolio analysis. Um, joint random variables are going to be very important to people using stock portfolios, for instance. Um, because they want to figure out expected values of the, their portfolios, they want to know about the variance of the portfolios, how much risk they're exposing themselves to. But there's a trick here, and that is that nobody has, well, maybe not nobody, but hardly anybody is going to have just one of this one stock and one share of this other stock. I mean, if they did, then they could use all these equations. But no, instead they've got a whole bunch of one, one type of stock and a whole bunch of another type of stock. And they want to know the expected value for their entire portfolio, um, you know, inc incorporating all of these shares. Uh, and they want to know the variance with all of these shares. So we have to add in some additional equations here. By the way, portfolio analysis, this is not the only circumstance in which you'll have sort of weighting. In other words, a number of shares, a number of um, representatives of one random variable on a number of representatives of another. Uh, but <laughs> It comes up so often in terms of stock portfolios that it, uh, we're calling it portfolio analysis because it's going to come up so often in the business context related to portfolios of stocks or other commodities. So we need to first of all figure out, we're going to define this as, you thought my spacing was wrong, but actually I was just leaving myself room. We'll call this equation 1a. That's sort of a 1a. Expected value. of, and this time we're going to call it AX plus BY. In other words, we're saying A shares of stock X, stock X being a random variable, and B shares of stock Y. That is going to be equal to AX plus We're just adding in, we're just multiplying the shares for each of those random variables. Uh, very straightforward so far. Things get a little bit more interesting when we start talking about variance again. We'll call this equation 3a. We'll say variance of ax plus by. Here, the equation transforms if a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y plus 2 times a times b times the covariance of x and y. Now there's another way we can actually write this. In fact, we'll call this equation 3b. Another way to write the variance of ax plus by is as follows. The beginning of the equation is all the same. In fact, if I was clever, I would have copied and pasted this. We can swap out covariance for correlation of x and y times the standard deviation of 
x times the standard deviation of y. Why can we do that? Well, it's because, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, correlation, you may remember from, from our previous video, correlation of x and y is equal to the covariance Covariance of x and y divided by standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. So if we cross multiplied, we would get correlation of the standard deviation of the correlation of x and y times the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y is equal to covariance. So all we're doing is we're substituting here. This is the exact same equation, but instead of covariance, we're using correlation times square root standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. These are interchangeable because of this equation down here. We're not really concerned about that. What we're concerned about is the, are these equations here. Now, notice something. These are really the equations you need. Mm. This one here, and these two down here. Because if you're dealing with a portfolio where you only have one of stock A and one of stock B, these are going to end up being the exact same things. This is exactly equivalent to this if A is 1 and B is 1. So these are really the only equations you need. Just, you know, if you're dealing with 1 and 1, you're just, you're just using 1 for A and 1 for B, and it comes out to the exact same thing here and here when you're talking about expected value or variance. All right, let's go ahead and apply these equations. Now, as with many things in introductory statistics, there's an equation. And the equation itself is not tremendously hard to apply. I mean, you just plug numbers in according to the variables. You have to figure out which variables represent which things, and then you just plug in numbers. The trick is knowing that you're dealing with a portfolio problem. And I won't always say portfolio problem. Well, of course, in this video, it is going to say that. I'm going to set portfolio example number one. Look. <laughs> but in real life, it won't necessarily say that. And it won't even necessarily be an, a problem that's dealing with stock portfolios. It could be dealing with something else. So the main thing to remember here is you're dealing with a certain number of one random variable and a certain number of another random variable. And if you want to find out things like expected value and variance, these are the equations to apply. So remember, it's, this is, it's, sort of like, it's, it's sort of like doing a weighted average. You're dealing with a number of one random variable and a number of another random variable. And when you're asked for expected value and variance, you go into these equations. Actually, let me go back here and grab my equations. I want, yeah, what the heck, I'll take them both. Actually, this, this is the only one I'm going to mess with, so. Let's see if this works. Well, it sort of worked. Yeah. And now I'm going to just bear with me. I'm going to put this on my next example as well. All right, enough of this silliness. Let's get to work. So here's our portfolio example number one. We have two stocks. We have 600 shares of stock A, 450 shares of stock B. And we know some things about the stocks. We know that their expected value is for the first stock A is 60, and it has a variance of 16. In other words, it has a standard deviation of 4. I made these nice numbers that are easy to take the square roots of. 450 shares of stock B, and the expected value of stock B is 80, and has a variance of 64, and a standard deviation of 8. Now, we know that the correlation between A and B is 0.17, and we're asked what is the expected value of the portfolio, and what is the portfolio's variance. So I'm going to work in red from now on. So we'll start off with expected value. And here we have expected value of AX plus BY is just the number of, in, case, in this case, it's the number of shares times the expected value of A and the number of shares times the expected value of B. So that's going to be 60. Well, we'll say 600 times 60 plus 450 times 80. 
Now, what does that equal? I'm not going to do the calculation. I've already done it. So that should give us 36,000 plus 36,000 equals 72,000. That is our expected value for the entire portfolio. All the stocks for A and B in our portfolio should give us an expected value of about $72,000. Now, let's move on to number two, where we have to calculate the portfolio's variance. This is the equation for variance of a two-stock portfolio. So let's go ahead and start plugging in numbers. I'm just going to write this whole thing out. We have 600 squared, that's A, times variance of A is 16, plus 450 squared times the variance of B, which is 64, plus 2 times 600 times 450 times the correlation which was given to us, correlation between A and B is 0 0.17 times the standard deviation of stock A, which is going to be 4, it's the square root of the variance, times the standard deviation of stock B, which is 8. And all that equals, if I've done my math right, about 21,657,600. And it didn't ask for this. That's the variance. It didn't ask. But if we wanted to calculate the standard deviation of that, it would just be the square root. So this is the variance of the portfolio. If we wanted the square root of I mean, sorry, the standard deviation of the portfolio, it would be about 4,650. 54, roughly. All right, let's move on to another example with a slight twist to it. Okay, here we have another example. We have 200 shares of stock A, which have an, each share has an expected value of 120 and has a variance of 400. We have 1,000 shares of stock B. Stock B has expected value of 50 and a standard deviation of, I'm sorry, a variance of 100. This time, though, we are not given correlation between these two stocks. Uh, we're given this, the expected value and the standard deviation, and it's asking us to solve for the correlation between the two stocks. So that's not a problem. We're just going to need, we have now the standard deviation. Standard deviation can give us the variance. And this is the equation for, var for variance of a stock portfolio, a two-stock portfolio, which includes the correlation. So that's what we're going to use. First of all, we have to figure out from the standard deviation, we need to figure out what the variance is. So we're going to square it. So if we square $9,918.68, we get something like the variance of the portfolio is going to equal 98,400,000, probably. So that's our variance of the portfolio. So now we basically just have to put together an equation that um, is going to solve for our correlation using our variance. Now, again, this is going to be pretty easy once we, once we get rolling. The key here, again, is just to recognize what you're dealing with. You're dealing with, yes, again, this is pretty easy. It says stock portfolio <laughs> example. But um, sometimes you're going to have the correlation. Sometimes you're going to have the, the standard deviation, the variance. You're just going to have to sort of make do, figure out what your unknown is, and then plug everything else in. So. Let's go ahead and do just that. We have 200 shares, so that's 200 squared times 400 plus 1,000 squared, I bet I know what that is, it's a million, times 100 plus 2 times 200 times 1,000 times the correlation, which we don't know, times the square root, in other words, standard deviation is the square root of 400, so that's 20, and the square root of 100 is 10. So let's simplify this a bit. Instead of 200 squared, that's going to be 40,000 times 400, so that's going to be 16 million plus, this is easy, 1,000 squared is 1 million times 100 is 100 million. Oh, right, I forgot an important part here. All of this 
is going to be equal to 98,400,000. So 98.4 million equals 16 million plus 100 million plus, okay, if we just take 2 times 200 is 400 times 1,000, that's 400,000 times 20 is going to be 8 million times 10 is 80 million. 80 million times the correlation. And now we can solve for all of this. We can, you know, start just doing our basic algebra. And what we will end up with, if I have done my math right, which is, I'd say, 80% likely, we should have a correlation of negative 0.22. So there's a negative association between these two stocks. Is that a bad thing? Actually, no. A lot of people prefer that in their stock portfolios. Why? Because it mitigates risk. In other words, if, yours, if one of your stocks tends to go up while the other one goes down, you know, you're going to be sort of even steven most of the time. Now, this is not a perfect negative correlation. doesn't mean there's going to be exact opposites, but, you know, there's a slight tendency for an opposite correlation between the two stocks.